Hey, how is everybody doing? Welcome back to the channel. As you guys see by the title and the thumbnail, we're talking about our lovely offensive coordinator, Clint Kubiak, and the struggles he has been having as an offensive play caller, especially the last two weeks, which we will zero in on. I'm going to preface this video by saying one thing, however. I obviously don't know as much about football as Clint Kubiak. So when making these types of videos, I get it. You might just look at this and be like, all right, this kid is not an NFL. He doesn't know what he's talking about. However, I mean, yes, I agree with that. However, as a play caller and a play caller is something about feel of a game, recognizing personnel, and it's a combination of a lot of different things. And I think Clint Kubiak, Clint Kubiak has absolutely struggled with just play calling in certain situations and in big time moments. I made a video last week kind of highlighting Clint Kubiak's play design. He, 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 he is genius when it comes to play design and when it works well. It looks magnificent. But when it comes to play calling and feel of a game, he has been terrible. He, he has been really bad and again, by no means am I saying I know more about football and I would be a better offensive coordinator than Clint Kubiak. However, he has struggled. His playing calling at certain times has left me just like, not just scratching my head, but almost getting angry at the TV. We're going to be talking about in this video. Thank you guys so much for support recently on the channel. Clint Kubiak deep diving again into his play calling the past couple of weeks. Let's get right into it. So going into this stretch with the Bears, Rams, Packers, Bears, I said the number one key is going to be our interior offensive line. And the reason I said that is because we got to recognize, like I was saying before, recognize our personnel and recognize the opponent's personnel. Akeem Hicks, Aaron Donald, and Kenny Clark. Those are probably the three best nose tackles in the NFL. If not, they're definitely all top five. I can't really see an argument on Aaron Donald, Akeem Hicks, and, espe and especially Kenny Clark to not be in a top five conversation when it comes to nose tackles. So knowing this, the Vikings... Obviously, they have a struggling interior offensive line, and they're going against some strong interior defensive lines. I'm going to keep this super simple for you guys. And then also going into the, pack, or into the Rams game, our right guard went down. Mason Cole got put on the IR. So we had Ole Uda starting at right guard going against Aaron Donald. And last week against the Bears, it was Mason Cole, Garrett Bradbury going against Akeem Hicks. And I want you to just keep this in mind when we're talking about this. So on first down, consistently, over the past two weeks, we have ran the ball straight into this wall. And it honestly seems like sometimes on first down with our play calling, it would almost be better taking a knee. Because when we just run straight up the middle, and this is, this is the part where I'm talking about me getting frustrated. Because the first play of the week, or first play of the game last week, we come out in I formation, tight end, fullback, and we just run straight at Aaron Donald. And he makes the first play for a TFL on the first play of the game. I don't think it recorded as a TFL. I think it was like a one-yard game. But the point being is those just kill – it just kills momentum. It sucks the life out of the stadium, especially when you got to be self-aware and you understand the fan base is, like, begging for aggressiveness and the whole state is begging for you to be aggressive. And you come out and you just run the ball consistently on first down – to Akeem Hicks, to Aaron Donald. And the thing, this is also the like head-scratching part, is if you know your personnel and you know Kirk Cousins is not the most mobile guy, you cannot get in the third and long. You just can't because he does not have the playmaking ability to kind of go off script and make a play and pick up a cheap third down when the defense has, its, has it covered very well. So getting ahead of the sticks is huge. So if you run the ball on first down and you get zero yards, consistently I think I counted four times against the Rams we ran the ball on first down and got one or less yards so if you're sitting in second and long consistently and you are still trying to force this issue of running the ball on first down that's where the that's where almost the apathy sets in where almost I don't want to watch anymore where because I am still continuously just watching my TV and just going, what is he thinking? Because a lot of the times I'm thinking he knows something I don't. And I'm waiting for Clint to kind of have this huge running game where the Vikings run for 200 yards. And the only time we had that was against the Steelers. And honestly, I think about every team in the NFL could have ran for 200 yards on the Steelers that day. They just did not bring it at all. I mean, that, that, that was like the only game we really had where we were effectively running it the whole time. And then if we're talking about red zone play calling, I mean, my God following a turnover 
that's also following a turnover where you get the ball in the red zone and you come out and run the ball two straight times off Anthony Barr's pick like that that is something where you have the momentum Stafford just made a huge mistake and you're just gonna let them off the hook completely don't try to put any pressure on them and this also comes back to knowing your own personnel we're in the red zone you have Tyler Conklin KJ Osborne Justin Jefferson on the outside and you have your backup running back Alexander Madison who I've been coming on here since the bye week and said he has had a bad year Madison has had a bad year and you still insist to get him the ball you still insist to run the ball if I'm Justin Jefferson he had every right to call out Clint Kubiak's red zone play call in this past week get him the ball I mean I'm so sick of just when we get in the red zone and we just waste the play by trying to get this running game going it just doesn't make sense to me. And the number one thing is we are not a good running team. I can understand if we are the Titans and we have Derrick Henry, but we're not. We do not have a very good offensive line that can assert their dominance on a team. Yes, they can assert their dominance on the Steelers when they're not really giving a... Like, I, mean, they, I mean, they could give a damn about that game last Thursday or two Thursdays ago. But when you're going against really good interior defensive lines, the Vikings continuously, continuously, Try to run the ball up the middle. And what do I say every week? Where is the Vikings' number one advantage every single week? Right here. He is one advantage we have every single week. I just don't get it. Let me know what you guys' thoughts on Clint Kubiak down below. I think it's a struggle of calling plays on first down, combination with calling plays in the red zone. It's conservative nature that he's just thinking we are still a power running team. Doesn't make sense to me. Let me know what you guys think down below. Skull Vikes.